police reform plan 101. We're going to take some calls as well. Pam Keith is here. Of course, she's a lawyer, also CEO of Center for Employment Justice. Uh, we have Chanel Dickerson as well, former D.C. police assistant chief. Uh, we're talking about reform. Number one, citizenship grade. I, you, you talked about this last time. I thought it was brilliant. I still think it's brilliant. Number two, involve the judges. Make them have to protect whistleblowers. Yes. Put it into law, starting with the city council. So we we're going to start in D.C. as a model to see what works. Uh, what is the third? You you said one, two, three. What's the third? The third is is about the disciplinary process and taking discipline that involves in community uh, engagement out of the grievance and arbitration process. Explain so, that, please. Okay, so right now, if you are get in trouble, you could get in trouble for a variety of things. You could get as a police trouble. officer. Give yes, me. A, you could yeah. get in trouble okay. for wearing your uniform wrong. You could get in trouble for being disrespectful to your boss, or you could get in trouble for uh, violating someone's civil rights. If those first two things should stay within the grievance arbitration process within your union, that's what they're there for. That's fine. But that third thing is about how you engage the 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 community. Right. And so what I am recommending is that we take that process completely out of the union management relationship, because the right. union management relationship is about trading. Right. And negotiating right. about whether somebody should stick around based on who likes whom inside the police department. And that ain't got nothing to do with how this person into, in, engaged with Jaquan. Right. The got person it. Got it. Or how they engage with Jaquan is Jaquan's family and Jaquan's community. Okay, so this uh, third removes the union. It from takes that the, disciplinary process out of the, so from the union. From now, the how union do you how do you get this done though? Because the union's yeah. not going to say nah. The union's going to push back on this. No, but it's not their choice. That's statutory. Whose choice is it? Who, it's who the, the choice it? of the city. It's the choice of the state. It's the choice. So of is the, this the mayor? Is this the governor? Is this the senator? This is, is the, the city council. State senator? Again, it's the state city. legislature. Right. It's the city council. It's the community. It's the county le county legislature. Right. You have county officials that make these kinds of decisions. So if you just take it out, the question from a constitutional point of view is, do they have a right to due process? And the answer is absolutely yes. I'm not saying that they don't get due process. I'm saying that that due process is no longer part of the union management relationship. Okay. I love that. So the city council is going to have to step up in two ways. Yep. And we're going to put pressure on them. I love it. I, th I think this is why we elect people and it would make me want to show up to vote. If I know that now I'm electing people, this, these are going to be the questions. Right. So if you do this, Karen, let me explain. If you do this, then the citizens would have a role. If I have to sign up for jury duty, then I would periodically potentially be called for police review. And if I'm called I as love that. for police review, then I'm going to sit and the four or five officers that have been found guilty of some violation of civil Ooh, rights. This is, this, is, this is the way right? it should be. The community should have a called. say. Yes. Exactly. And I, as a member of this panel, will decide whether that person gets to continue policing my community. I love it. Okay. Now, what, <laughs> where are the landmines? Pam Keith, where are the landmines? Chanel Dickerson, where, you know, how well, do we, see, how do we never get, okay. Here's the thing. FOP won't like it. Chief of police won't like it, but here's what it doesn't do. It doesn't reduce the number of police. It doesn't reduce funding to police, right? It doesn't, it doesn't demonize police. Right. It actually protects police. It's not, it doesn't create an us and them scenario. Right. I'm putting ideas that make the lives of police officers better and safer. Less. Yes. And that's how, again, language is everything. OK, let's put the naming police something different over here because we must do that eventually. But we baby step this. We got to we got to make them comfortable in that pot of boiling water. You know, it's a one degree at a time. First, we got to get the city council gathered up to do the things, because I feel like right now they got their own agenda. Their agenda is not our agenda because, you know, most of us didn't show up to vote anyway. So they're they cutting their deals, making their little side things, looking to be go to the next level, go to Congress or whatever. And the, the, the city, the, the people of the city are at their mercy. No, 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 no. That has to change. Now, with the third thing, does that require a letter or some sort of? I mean, that just requires, letter? again, lobbying the city lobbying, council lobbying. and a proposal. The, go ahead, Chanel. Let me just interject on that. In November of last year, the disciplinary um, with the union and management relationship changed. So the city council did do their job on that. Okay. That is already in November of last year. Right. It changed. 
Yes. So, right. yeah, so if they can change it once, they can change it twice, three, four, five times. They can continue to change it until they get where we want them to go. My yes. view, right. My view is that this is fraternal order of police has, like I said, there's a, there's federal statutes that allow for unionization and so forth. But what they get to negotiate about is a matter of, of local policy. You change local policy, you change how this rolls. Now, this is how it changes mindset. Think about Derek Chauvin. Why did he do what he do? Because he knew his union had his back and he knew his boss had his back. And so whatever he did was going to be copacetic. The question right. that goes, the thought process of a police officer when they know, when they're engaging Jaquan, is that if I screw this up, it ain't going to be the union. Union can't do nothing for me. Chief can't do nothing for me. It's out of their hands. That changes their behavior. Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. We've got a bunch of callers. Let's rapid fire go through them. I think this is a great plan, uh, Pam. I'm looking forward to this uh, the city council letter so that I could tweet that out as soon as possible. And then, uh, family, get to work. Like you ain't got to live in D.C. to 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 bombard and and letter writing works. Okay. So you got now the email addresses of every single member of city council. All of them should get this letter at the same time. And let's have a plan for that too. So it looks like they are just being inundated because they are. 